In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to replicate the miniature tilt shift effect in post using Shotcut. Of course, this isn't the real tilt shift effect because in order to do that, you would need to do that in camera with a tilt shift lens. But you can fake that effect in post using Shotcut and I'm going to show you how. So stay tuned. I'm just a normal person with no video editing background who wanted to start making YouTube videos and maybe cool transitions and effects. I don't really plan on being a professional video editor, so I was looking for a free, easy to learn video editing software. Luckily, I stumbled on Shotcut, a free open source video editing program that can do many of the tricks you can do on more enterprise video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but with a much simpler and leaner interface, thus dramatically shortening the learning curve. It just takes using your imagination. So let's learn together. When I was practicing this effect, I was actually surprised how easy this was to accomplish just by using a few steps. And I'm going to be showing you this today. This tutorial is done on Shotcut version 20.09.27. If you are filming your own file, you need to make sure that you are looking down on your subject. This helps minimize your subject and helps with the miniaturized perspective. Imagine you being a giant, looking down on the cars and people below. That's the perspective your video needs to have. If you're using recorded videos already, that's the kind of perspective it needs. I happen to be using stock video, so that's the kind of video I was looking for, and I found this one here. If you notice the perspective, even before I do anything to it, it already somewhat looks miniaturized because I'm looking down on the subject. And in this instance, I think I'm going to be focusing on this thing here, this area around the middle bottom part. That's the part that I'm going to make look like toys or miniaturize. So with that video chosen, I'm going to drag it right into the timeline. Like so. I'm also going to make a copy of this particular clip by clicking Control C. I'm going to right click this and I'm going to insert another track right on top of it. And I'm going to paste an identical copy of it right on top. There. so that they're exactly on top of each other. All I'm going to try to do is maintain the sharpness of my subject, which is this car, for example, and then I'm going to try to blur everything else around it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to mask the top video and basically punch a hole through it. And this is how I'm going to do it. In order for me to illustrate this technique, I'm going to have to add an extra step. Now, mind you, this extra step has nothing to do with this technique. All it's going to do is help me show you what I'm trying to do. So first and foremost, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've added a third track on top, on top of the previous track that I've created before. And let's zoom in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this video here. I'm going to move it up to that top track. And then in this middle track, I'm going to click Open Other right there. I'm going to choose Color. And in this color box, I'm going to choose the color black. Like so. I don't know why that keeps choosing transparent, but yeah. So that's black. And then I'm going to drag it into here to fully cover that bottom part right there, stretch it all the way to the end. And so now the order is the original video. And then if I make that layer invisible, it's then a black layer. And then underneath it is a copy of the video. And I'm going to show you why I did that. Okay. So while we're on this top layer, what I'm going to need to do is we're going to need to go to filters here, like that, and we're going to choose mask. 
And in this instance, I'm going to choose mask simple shape. So in this particular mask, we want the ellipse shape. And then I'm going to increase the width of it. Like that. And then I'm going to move it down. And I'm going to find that, that car that we want to focus on. Right there. And so that's going to be the center of our of our focal point. Uh, I'm going to change the height a little bit so that it can kind of focus on more things, maybe right there. And so now I'm going to show you why I chose a black background in this middle point here, because if this black layer did not exist, if I made it invisible, there's no way for you to tell where the mask is because it's I have two identical videos on top of each other. And so you're not going to see what I'm doing, but if I include that black mask or the black background in the middle, you know exactly what I'm trying to do. Okay. So with that chosen, I'm going to go back to the original video on the top layer, which is on V3. I'm then going to choose another filter, click the plus button, and we're going to choose Gaussian Blur. Now, what's happened, so if I, if I increase the blur, you're seeing that, what's happening is it's blurring the ellipse, ellipse in the middle. But in fact, what I want it to do is I want it to blur everything else except for this middle part. So we actually want to go back to the mask simple shape. And instead of this operation set to overwrite, we want to go to subtract, right? And so now what it's doing is it is showing everything else except for the part that I want to focus on. And so now that that, now that the selection has been created with the help of that black background, I don't need that black background anymore. So I can actually just make that invisible by clicking this eyeball here. And then with that selected, knowing that everything else is, is chosen, I can go back to the Gaussian blur here. And then I can then increase the blur. As you can see in my image, I'm blurring everything else except for that oval shape in the middle. Now, what we notice here, if I drive it all the way to here, what I notice is the edge of the oval is a little too harsh. And so what we want to do is we actually want to go to back to the mask simple shape and go into the softness setting, and we actually want to make it even softer so that, so that the oval looks a little bit more gradual. And then let's go back to the Gaussian blur, and we, we want to drop that blur by a lot because this is, that's not how our eyeballs see toys. So this is probably about the right setting, which is, it looks like 44.8. And so let's go ahead and play that and see what that looks like. And that's basically it, really. Believe it or not, this is the whole, this is the whole technique. Um, so if I, uncheck that top layer and I play this video, the original video, that's what it looks like. But if I add that additional layer on top of it, this is where that toy, it actually helps that my computer is 
stuttering a little bit so it creates kind of that herky-jerky movement when in actuality it should actually be playing in full speed so let me just set the preview scaling to 360 so that you can see it in full speed and so that right there is the tilt shift technique replicated in post editing using Shotcut. Now let me render this so that you see what this whole thing looks like after it's been exported. So there it is, creating the tilt shift effect in post editing using Shotcut. Pretty easy, right? So once again, thank you for coming to my channel, watching my tutorial, and once again, last but not least, just asking you guys, if you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button. I appreciate your subscription. I'll see you in the next tutorial.